Firstly, as Oliver said, uh, good morning and welcome to the second annual Ending Age-Related Disease Conference here in New York City. Last year was a great success and this year, from the looks of it, is poised to be the same. And I'd like to thank you all for being part of this most important field of overcoming the diseases and disabilities of aging. Both today and tomorrow are packed with some truly amazing speakers at the forefront of various aspects of this transformative field. And as such, we have a little bit of a challenge ahead of us to keep the program moving briskly and any questions for the speakers succinct, but I think we can handle it. Uh, I'd like to thank our event sponsors and uh, media partners as well, many wonderful organizations and companies with whom uh, many of you might be familiar already, but I encourage you to learn more about their work through their printed materials in your bags or clicking their logos on the conference website at lifespan.io slash conference. In particular, I'd like to thank our silver sponsors, Genome Protection, a biotechnology company working on drugs that protect against cancer and age-related diseases by neutralizing the effect of viral retro elements contained in our genome, and the i portfolio company, Ikaria Life Sciences, a dedicated contract research organization focused specifically on aging research and offering services such as drug discovery, senolytics, animal husbandry, protein engineering, and consulting. And our gold sponsor, the Cooper Union, our host here at the Frederick Rose Auditorium, ally in our efforts to build the life sciences ecosystem here in New York, and about whom Oliver can tell you more during his introduction as he's the head of their burgeoning uh, bioengineering program here. And I'd also like to thank our board at LEAF, especially Elena Milova, who's been working tirelessly to organize this event, as well as our dedicated volunteers and staff. You might have received a lot of emails from Elena, depending on who you are. And of course, our growing group of heroes who support us at lifespan.io slash hero, many of whom are here today. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So again, thank you. So last year when I stood on the stage to close the conference, I had said I'd hoped that by this year, we'd have no doubt much progress to discuss. And I'm happy to say that is definitely the case. For example, I said I'd hope to see more companies and research projects on our research roadmap, which charts the progress of credible work to address the hallmarks of aging for the public and where each is in the clinical trials process. And as you can see, in just one year's time, this landscape is entirely different. In fact, it's almost becoming hard to keep up with the nearly constant stream of news and Google alerts about promising therapies like Senolytics entering human trials, new companies being formed, and high-profile venture capital funds being created with the express goal of deploying capital to defeating the diseases of aging and increasing healthy human longevity. This acceleration might actually be challenging for my intelligibility of all that's happening at any given moment, but it's good news for the field and for the world. As many of us well know, the stakes could not possibly be higher and progress could not happen soon enough. Over 100,000 people every day lost to the diseases of aging, not to mention the suffering that typically precedes this. And the socioeconomic challenges presented by the aging population in the near future. Challenges we must meet head on to allow for the continued existence of social safety net programs like Social Security and Medicare and promote the economic sustainability of the world in general. The good news is, it's not only the volume and pace of research that's accelerating, but also the growth and positive attention from the public, influential organizations, and governments as well. For example, just a few months ago, the XPRIZE Foundation, famous for creating multi-million dollar competitions for technological breakthroughs, held a gathering at their headquarters with over 70 leaders of the field, including scientists, policymakers, advocates, and journalists, many of whom are present here, to discuss ideas for launching a large-scale XPRIZE focused on increasing healthy human longevity. You can imagine the shockwaves it would send if such an endeavor succeeds not only in terms of the resulting scientific breakthroughs, but also in terms of public engagement and inspiration. This isn't something that would have happened five years ago. National governments are also starting to address aging population demographics, such as Singapore implementing their $3 billion action plan for successful aging focused on improving longevity through better preventative health care and infrastructure. State-level governments here in the United States are beginning to get serious on the issue as well such as California this year launching an Alzheimer's Prevention Task Force and the governor calling for a master plan on aging to allocate funding towards the preservation of dignity and independence with age. 
Furthermore, new nonprofits are being formed that can help catalyze similar policies in other states and at the federal level, such as the Academy for Health and Lifespan Research, which was announced earlier this year and includes many world-renowned scientists among its founders. We at LEAF are trying to do our part in this as well, not only by supporting early stage research via our crowdfunding platform, Lifespan.io, but also by engaging the public at large through our news outlet, mainstream press appearances, and collaborations with YouTube celebrities such as Quartz Kazakh and Life Noggin. And in this way, helping to build a growing global grassroots movement behind this work. On this subject, we have a proper press room this year and videographers on site, and I encourage all our speakers to share your thoughts with them, to be communicators in addition to scientists, investors, and advocates. In the near term, we'll also be launching our next campaign on Lifespan.io with the MitoSense team at the Sense Research Foundation to follow up on their successful work backing up mitochondrial DNA in the cell nucleus and thereby protecting against the key driver of age-related damage. You'll actually hear more about this later from Amutha, and the campaign will be launching in a few months' time. We're also increasing our own creative presence on media platforms like Facebook and YouTube. As while it's valuable collaborating with large-scale influencers, it's better to become them ourselves. Specifically, I'd like to uh, commend Nicola and Giuliano from our team for their work in creating the newly launched, and in my opinion, excellent Life Extend show to inform and engage the public regarding rejuvenation biotechnology and its social implications. As for longer term plans, our next major step will be to take the two main arms of what we do, our news outlet, which also hosts our investor network and webinars, etc., and our crowdfunding site, which also has the tools like the roadmap, and essentially combining them together to form a true community hub, <laughs> hopefully Voltron won't sue me, uh, greater than the sum of its parts. For example, the ability for organizations to have curated news columns of their own, rich profiles and forums that will enable more opportunities for us all to collaborate with each other, and tools that enable crowdsourced data exchange, potentially paving the way for new clinical trial approaches. One aspect of this, already in progress, is the creation of new petition-style campaigns that can be used to craft powerful infographic calls to action and have them signed by both researchers and the public at large. As always, if any of this is interesting to you and you'd like to help, support is always appreciated. But, of course, we are just one part of this ever-growing ecosystem. And thus, it is important for each one of us to support each other and to be aware of every aspect of what we do and how it affects everything else, be it the research, investment, or advocacy, and how this, in turn, has bearing on the rest of the world and how we can collectively help solve some of the most pressing issues and inequities of our age. In fact, one of the things I love about this field is that everyone working seriously within it knows what's at stake. And the gravity of this allows us to put aside our individual pursuits and work together, because that is what the importance of the task demands of us. We're all on this human journey together, and we're honestly lucky to be living now, in this moment where, thanks to the work of people in this room, we have a real chance at overcoming some of the worst diseases ever known to humankind. Something that's been part of our collective dream as a species since the first stories ever told. It's my hope that we can continue the spirit of collaboration and move forward together as fast as we can to a world free of the diseases and disabilities of aging. Thank you.